Welcome back to the channel. I'm Chase and this is All Things Round. Today we are going mountaineering or we're looking at a mountaineering watch. Now, like anybody who loves affordable watches, I was perusing Amazon and found this Avtrek. Now, Avtrek goes by different names such as North Edge, and there's a few other Chinese sort of names on there, but the one I picked up again was Avtech. Now, this thing was under 80 bucks, and it really, I think, is a lot of bang for your buck. Now, when I say, hey, I'm going mountaineering, well, I am going to take it in the field. I have a topographical map, and we're gonna take it out, but we're not gonna do it now, we're gonna do it in a few weeks. This is just my initial impressions. We're gonna go over every functionality that's in the watch, sort of how to use it, and what I think about after wearing it for a couple weeks. Now let's just flip the camera around and hop right into the review. Okay, and this is what we're looking at today. This is the Avtrek. I got this on Amazon, and this thing was I wanna say 72, 73, we'll just say under $80. Now Avtrek goes by another name too, and that is North Edge. Same watch, same brand, just you know, some of those Chinese companies or whatever, just you know, inter swap the names. This is one of those, this is the Avtrek. So if you see a North Edge, and I'm looking at a North Edge similar watch to this, but it is a diving watch, so it has 200 meters of water resistance and it's like 200 bucks, I'm looking at one of those. So if I do review that, it's just the same company, so keep that in mind. Now the reason I got this is because I've really been interested in getting just an everyday hiking watch for when I go hiking. They consider this a mountaineering watch. Now, what do they mean by mountaineering? Well, I can tell you that this offers a few things. It offers a barometer. Now this is supposedly offers, we're gonna test these out in the field offers a barometer, an altimeter, and a compass. It also has several other features and we'll go through it in just a minute. Now this thing, the footprint of this is rather large and you notice it when it's on your wrist, but surprisingly, even as big as it is, and we're gonna go through the measurements in just a second, it actually doesn't sit that big on the wrist. Now this thing measures like a giant Invicta, but it feels more like a large pilot's watch. So let's just pull up the calipers and let's go ahead and do some quick measurements. Then we'll get into the features of this watch and what I plan to do with it in the future. Okay, it measures just under 50 millimeters in the diameter. The thing that I care about the most would be the lug to lug, which is just under 53. The thickness of this thing is rather thick at just under 16 and the lug width of this watch is basically 24. So this is by no means a small watch, clearly. Now, like I said, this offers a lot of features and let's just get into them right now. So we're gonna cycle through this. Whenever you look at the instructions for this, they label these different pushers as A, B, C, D, I don't really remember. So it took a little bit to understand just how to work this. But honestly, once you understand, it's really quite easy. Now this button right here at the 10 o'clock position is the backlight. Now it's a very light backlight. You can't see it very well. In the dark, you see it just fine. And we'll kind of test that out at the very end. One of the things I do like about the backlight is it's on and it doesn't just shut off, it sort of slowly dims out and fades away. Now your main button on this is gonna be like any other digital or smart watch. It's gonna be down here at the seven, eight o'clock position. Now, right now it is on the first time zone. On the first time zone, you can see that right now it says 5.49 p.m. The date is 7.25 and you can see it has a small graph up here at the top. Seconds are running along the outside and has seconds right here at the three o'clock position. Hit it once and you have your step counter or your pedometer or pedometer or whatever the heck you say. Um, now there's a reason for this and I'll go over it when I go over what I plan to do with this watch. Hit it again 
and it has a record feature. The record feature is basically everything you've done on the watch. It has an alarm. I have it set for 5.50 a.m. because I have been using this to wake me up in the morning and you see it's turned on. Hit it again, it has a chronograph feature or a stopwatch. Hit it once and you can see that it goes. Subseconds, seconds, minutes, hours. You can see that it's spinning around here extremely fast around the outside for the hundredths of seconds. Hit it once, long push down here at the four o'clock, resets everything, basically like any chronograph. Hit it again, you have a timer. Now the timer I've set for 30 minutes, this is actually pretty awesome. You know, it's, it's cool that it has all these different features. For the timer function, basically what you wanna do is the main pusher down here, you wanna hold that, and you can see it says hold, and then you can go through and cycle through and adjust exactly how to set your timer. Again, this is super easy. If you've ever had a smartwatch or a, a smartwatch in this setup, most people when they hear smartwatch, they think Apple Watch. If you've ever had a, a digital watch, then all this sort of makes sense to you. Hit it again, this is a pacer. Now. By a pacer, it's not like a pace counter like I met, like I first thought when I thought, oh, mountaineering watch, a pace counter. This is a metronome. So if I click it once, turn it on, you can see that it is going at 65, whatever, for the metronome. I don't understand why this is here. If you want to play piano, that's awesome. I don't. Offer a second time zone. This is four hours ahead of what I have it on right now for East Coast time. And then hit it again, and this is your digital compass. Now, it does offer, again, like I said, the altimeter and the barometer. So hit it again, you go to your main section, you hit the four o'clock button down here, and you have your different functions. This is gonna be your altimeter. Go back to the time zone. Up here is gonna be your barometer. And there's different things that you can do. Like if I hold this down, it'll sort of cycle through up here in the corner. See it to turn to Sunday, hit it again. And it gives you the degrees. It's 83.5 degrees supposedly in the studio. Hit it again, press it down. Different graphs on here. Now the reason why there's different graphs is because it shows your elevation a, a chart of your elevation throughout the day. Now, if I want to go to the altimeter, I'll hit it right here, and you can see right now it says I'm 298 feet above sea level. Now, what I can do is I can zero this out, and the way I zero it out is I hold this down, then I can go through different things. I can calibrate. Um, right now, I just wanna zero it out, so zero, yes. Now, the reason I would wanna zero it out is because if I was mountaineering and climbing a mountain and I'm looking at a, a topographical map and I, I know that I'm going from point A to point B and it's a 2,000 foot climb. Now, whenever you're looking at a topographical map and you're doing something called land navigation, which we're gonna get into in the follow-up video on this in about two weeks, because I am going to put I say my life on the line, but really I'm not. I'm taking a compass with me and I'm taking this and I'm gonna use this, but also the standard compass just to verify the sort of use of this. Now, if I cycle through, I'm just gonna go to the compass. Now, from what I hear with the compass is it needs to be calibrated constantly out in the field. Well, that's not really a big deal because it auto calibrates itself and I'll go through those functions and features when I'm out in the field. Now I have a topographical map and I have an area that I kind of know and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set point A uh, of a trailhead up to point B. I'm gonna go ahead and create an azimuth, right, through the map, through my standard compass. Then I'm gonna use this to follow whatever my azimuth is on my standard compass I'm gonna use on this. Then I'm gonna reverse azimuth it. If I can find the spot, then I'm gonna reverse azimuth it and come back using this as well, verifying with a standard compass. Now, I'm gonna go through the features and I'm gonna see if the altimeter is accurate. Okay, I'm at 
2,000 feet right now on the topographical map, or I'm at 1,800 feet above sea level on the topographical map. I'm gonna clear it out, and then I'm going to hike to my spot. Now, on the back, this does say that it does have 50 meters of water resistance. So this is basically a watch you can wear everywhere. Now, I assume this tiny little hole right here is gonna be in reference to a sensor, like the barometer that kind of reads the moisture and the air pressure around you. But like it says right here, it, is, it has altitude, barrow, which is barometer, compass, pedometer, or pedometer. Is it pedometer or pedometer? I feel like if I say pedometer, it's like pedophile. So pedometer, water resistance, 50 meters, stainless steel case. Honestly, I think this thing is pretty awesome. Cycle back to the main time zone right here. Let's just go ahead and try it on my wrist. And then I'll tell you exactly how I feel about this after wearing it for, I would say probably two and a half weeks now. First, let's just go over the outside. I forgot to even go over the outside. Now this is like a matte black finish, all stainless steel on the case. You can see the lugs are extremely short, which is nice. And it has sort of a high polish finish right here on the edge of the bezel with this sort of textured bezel on the top. Honestly, it's super stealthy, it's super cool, and you know, it actually works well at work because it just blends in seamlessly with my uniform. It does have a nylon style NATO strap because a NATO strap normally goes around the back, but it does have this nylon strap and it is like double strapped. So normally there is, normally this is the thickness of a single strap. You can see that they like stacked up two, glued them and then sewed them together just to create more durability. Honestly, this thing is extremely comfortable. It comes in at just about 100 grams. So a lot of people wear sports watches that are slightly heavier than that, 150 grams, 160 grams because they have a stainless steel bracelet. So honestly, if you think of a 100 gram watch that just has this nylon strap that's extremely comfortable, it doesn't fit heavy on your wrist at all. Now, let's try it on the wrist. Okay, now here it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, and you can see that it is a little large, but honestly, it's not overbearing. It is a little high, but again, not overbearing. When you have something like this, either a Garmin or a mapping watch, a GPS watch, or a mountaineering watch like they say this is, honestly, you don't want it small, you want it large, and you want it legible. One of the things I really like about this watch is it is extremely legible. It is so legible, especially in the bright, light outside. It may not appear that it is, but maybe it's just the camera, but honestly, at any angle, I can see this just fine. I mean, honestly, I'm extremely happy with this watch so far. For 75-ish dollars, honestly, you really can't do worse. Now, I've seen some positive and negative reviews on Amazon for this watch, and I've had nothing but a positive experience. Some people are like, oh, this is great bang for your buck. And honestly, I think it is. Some people may have had some really bad experiences, maybe some quality control issues, but honestly, mine has had no problems at all. In fact, throughout the day, the reason why you can see that it has this sudden jump is because throughout the day, I'll just go through, I'll start messing with my watch while I'm on a call or whatever, if I'm waiting around for somebody else or in between calls or whatever the case may be, and I'll go through and I'll reset everything, right? I'll zero out the altimeter. I'll, I'll, I'll zero out the, the compass or I'll go through and I'll recalibrate the compass. And I'll do all this stuff, just messing around with it, you know, using the chronograph function and stuff like that, just so I have an understanding of exactly how this works. And again, this is extremely easy to use. Right now, if you wanna reset the time, let's just say, because I went over resetting everything else, you just hit the main button at the seven, eight o'clock position, and you can see that it starts cycling through just like anything else. I'm gonna hold it down because I don't say I don't need to change anything, and it goes right back. Extremely easy to use. The directions are garbage because it's just, it just goes through and it, and it was really complicated to read the directions when it's just easier to mess with it for a while. Honestly, I'm excited to take this out in the field. Forgot to say the glass on this is just that, it's mineral glass, but are you really expecting to get a sapphire? No, not at $75. Well, if, it, if this said Pagani Design, maybe. But for this, mineral glass is fine. Um, it's not gonna scratch as easy. Honestly, I would have preferred 
to see something like um, like a plexiglass. And I know that sounds kind of crazy because honestly, when it comes to plexiglass and stuff like that, it scratches up extremely easy. However, if I take this out in the field, the last thing I want to do is break the glass on this. I would rather it bend slightly and gouge and then take some poly watch and, and you know, polish it up when I get home, then have this break out in the field and then possibly render the watch useless. Some things to consider, especially when you're out in the field. I prefer sapphire, don't like mineral glass, but the mineral glass on this makes it look really nice, but I would have preferred a plexiglass or something even cheaper simply because it's better shock resistance, especially if you're mountaineering. Okay, so honestly, I think this thing is pretty damn awesome. Honestly, I think it offers a lot of value in its package, especially with the fact that it has a solid stainless steel case, has an awesome digital module that offers a lot of different functionality, very comfortable nylon strap and 50 meters of water resistance so you can wear it any day, any time, any hike, in the rain, through the river, through the mountains, and it's not going to be an issue for you at all. Now, my goal is to release the actual in the field video in, I would say, about two weeks. So I haven't gone into the mountains yet to test it. My goal, my hope is to go maybe in the next week, week and a half. It's going to take some time. I mean, Yes, I live in Alaska and I have mountains that surround me, but I really want to plan it out so the features are tested to their limits. So it's going to take some time. So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment at the content you guys would like to see. And if you guys are interested in that video, make sure you guys are hitting that notification bell so you can be notified when I drop that next video. Until next time.